The Gambian economy is predominantly agrarian. The agricultural production is highly rainfall dependent, and the rainfall total and distribution has been erratic and grossly inadequate. The short wet season limits production to one crop per year, and the main cash crop grano production continuously decreases over the years due to adverse climate conditions. Right now, if you use right seeds that will take between three to four months to mature, that means you've not yet eradicated hunger. But if you have seeds that will take at least two months, that will reduce poverty and eradicate hunger. The rainy season is about to end. In spite of the long farming season, none of our crops are ripe. But if you look at this one, it germinates quickly, and that's why we're making the best use of it. Every farmer should use seeds that get ripe quickly. Through that, you should be able to help yourself and others. But if you take seeds that will take long and the rains are erratic, you will have problems. It will not be good. Mission Objective 1 of Action Aid International, the Gambia Country Strategy Paper CSP4, promote sustainable agriculture and control over natural resources to improve lives and livelihoods of people living in poverty and social exclusion. Action Aid as an organization has realized that uh, conventional agriculture, some would call it industrial agriculture or traditional agriculture, has not been working very well. Even farmers have been complaining that uh, soil fertility rates have gone down, their yields have plummeted, gone down very significantly. So this is all because sustainable agri I mean, uh, conventional agriculture depends largely on external inputs like chemical fertilizer, pesticides that are very expensive for women smallholder farmers to afford. Action Aid considers sustainable agriculture as an approach derived from the recognitions of people's right to food. It is a way of life based on self-reliance and agroecological systems which encompass all forms of livelihood for smallholder farmers, especially who have inadequate access to land and other production resources. The village head gave us a farmland at the other end some years back. So when we wanted a land to do for gardening, he said, you forgot, but I once gave you a land and it belongs to you. I told him that we want to cultivate rice there, but he said that piece is not fit for rice cultivation. He said he has two other farmlands and he will give it to us. But this is the only piece of land he gave us. Our own land is at the other end, but someone cultivated on it. I went to the village head and he stamped the ownership document. I was supposed to take it to the chief and the governor to stamp it. But I did not do this because I saw someone cultivating it and I'm afraid. Over the years, monoculture or single crop farming has been the major practice by most farmers. Currently, the farming system in the Gambia is riddled with soil fertility conditions, inadequate moisture resulting to poor yield. The rapid deteriorating condition of the soil is attributed to poor cropping and inappropriate land management systems. We have seen that the cultivation of granite, hoose and rice cannot continue forever because the soil is exhausted. We shall embark on tree planting, if we plant trees, we benefit. Our children and even our grandchildren will benefit from them. Planting tree does not only stop at mango or cashew. We are poor farmers and our first problem is that the soil is infertile. When you cultivate and you don't have fertilizer, it will not be good. Farmers in the rural communities mostly rely on traditional farm implements and conventional method of farming resulting to low productivity. They tend to sell the bulk of their produce immediately after harvest at giveaway prices. Yesterday and today are quite different, just like night and day. Similarly, in our farming method, we were using hoes to till the soil. Today, all that has changed by God's grace. Now you can clear the land and till the soil in one day. 
Yalla dindi la The training on climate resilience sustainable agriculture that was conducted in Brigamaba Central River Region for 22 smallholder farmers from 12 organizations, including Apexes and community cooperatives, exposed participants to new and innovative concepts of sustainable agriculture and the use of sustainable technologies. We were trained by Axon Aid and they told us that we should not rely on single crop farming. We can use two different crops in one farm and the roots of the two crops will help one another. After the training, I came to inform my group members that we should have a farm. We cultivated beans and maize. I grew leaves, maize, beans, granite, sweet potatoes, garden egg, tomatoes, and two different types of pumpkin in this garden. Previously, I was doing single crop farming, but when we attended the training in Brikamaba, we were told that it is not only one crop that we can cultivate in our farms. It is good to do mixed crop farming. When I came, I tried that. I grew beans, cassava, pumpkin, garden egg, okra, cucumber, and tomatoes. Different varieties of seeds, such as maize, rice, groundnut, cowpea, and cassu seeds were distributed to the farmers who attended the training to encourage intercropping for the promotion of sustainable agriculture. What I have to say is that, as a farmer, when you want to farm in order to get something for your survival, never forget about cultivating maize. Maize can give you abundant yield. Among all the crops that we grew, maize is the most reliable crop that can eradicate hunger. Let us all rust to cultivate the rice variety called WAP. If it is cultivated very well, it will bring progress for us. We are tired. We cultivate millet, granite, and we mine local incense, salt, and pick baobab. But I'm optimistic that if the rice is ripe, no one will see me mining local incense. Kasu is very important. Planting of mango trees, other types of trees and gardening should all be included in our farming system instead of relying only on granite and millet cultivation. If they are not good, you will lose everything. They are beginning to understand because they have been strongly adhered to the conventional or traditional form of agriculture. Uh, get your seed, plant it, apply fertilizer, apply chem um, chemicals or pesticides, these kind of things. But when we took them through that training, we told them that there are uh, farming systems that they can use without relying on these kind of things. So just allow nature to play, ecosystem, give it a stable uh, sort of environment, and then you can see all these uh, ecological processes taking place. So you can plant to use your animal uh, manure as local resources to maintain soil fertility in the field. And uh, that will also improve the soil structure and texture over time. So they have started to realize some benefits. Now the rice farmers there do not apply any chemical fertilizer and they are sort of a very high yield. This documentary that we are putting up is one of the activities that the National Alliance for Food Security, the Gambia, um, is implementing. The National Food Security or National Alliance for Food Security, the Gambia, is a consortium of, of seven, eight organizations that come together to help fight against food and nutrition insecurity in the Gambia. It does its I mean, activities, that is, implement its activities through empowerment strategy, through capacity building program, through solidarity with other line-minded groups and other alternatives. This training is, 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 is very, very important. Important in the sense that one, it gives the farmer the skills, the knowledge in the adopting and using this um, climate resilient sustainable agriculture that the farmer don't have previously. It also gives the farmer the opportunity, 
the opportunity to compare the effects, to compare the advantages and disadvantages of sustainable agriculture as, um, against the conventional agriculture. The farmer also will learn new skills, new technologies that he or she will be able to apply on his, land, on his or her land. So that you know he's going to, he or she is going to compare the two metals which one shoots in better. For me, it is a very good one because it keeps them with the necessary techniques and skills in the sustainable agricultural practices. Farmers are optimistic that the knowledge gained from the training will help boost their productivity. This documentary on climate resilience for sustainable agriculture was sponsored by National Alliance for Food Security, NAFSG, International Food Security Network, IFSN, in order to share the resilience of the practices with the general farmer population.